Shalom Rastafari. We want to speak on what this Day of Atonement and what the Day of Atonement is for us in principle. Because although we are Yehuda-ish, right? Yehuda, Judah-ish, right? We are men and mind of Yehuda. Yehuda mean the praise of Yah. And it's I and I as Rastafari who give eyes, 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 eyes. I is Yeshua, our Moshiach. I we give thanks and praise to the Ab, to the Father, for I and I, Lord and Savior, our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua, our Moshiach, Jesus Christos. But what do we? People will say, "Well, what do we believe?" Right? We we don't leave, believe, right? We believe in Him. But what is it that we, as so-called Messianic, some will say, "Are you Messianic?" For lack of a better word, I guess you can say we're of the Moshiach, we're of the King Messiah, right? We're of the Father in and through the Son. And what we maintain is that Judgment Day, what's known as Judgment Day, has, has already come. But in His mercy, right, He's not willing that any should perish. So we have gone forward and we proclaim the good news, the gospel of the King of Kings, of Ketamawi Hala Selassie. Amen. Amen. So we admit in Namanalin that the judgment day has come, right? And even the future day of judgment for I and I has decided already, but how and why? It's because of the Seha Elohim, it's because of Yeegaziyah Herbeg, it's because of the Lamb of God, and it's because of His at one man Tao. Because He is that mediator. He is that door. Yeshua HaMoshiach. He's that door. He is that mediator. He is the way in which we come in to our Father's house in, in grace and in truth. That justice, we talk about justice and Siddiq, right? It was served. Justice has been served. We declare that justice has been served through the sacrifice through the Meshwa'it, the sacrifice and the sacrificial offering of Yeshua, right? Of Yahshua, if you please, of Jahshua, for I and I, sin nature, for the old nature, for the fallen man, right? For that fallen nature, that old nature, the old man. This is why we are that new race in the grace of the King of Kings in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 goes into explicating and explaining the matter a little bit more, but we go forward because he is the perfect fulfillment, the perfect at one ment of what is known in the Hebrew and among the Jews as the Akedah, the Akedah of Yisahak. The Akedah of Isaac, the binding of Isaac, the son of Abraham. It's a, it's a, it's a parable. It, it, it's a type. Those on the outside just see it as a parable. But those of us in the, on the inside, those of us who are disciples, who, who, have, who have denied ourselves, picked up our cross, even the true cross, and follow him, follow the son, the Bain Ha'Elohim. Follow Christos, the son of Jah. We understand that truly Yeshua is the perfect fulfillment of the binding of Yishak. Selezi, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. As the Rastafari song says, is, is thy name written there? Awo, amen. I and I names are written. In the Lamb's book of life, by faith in His grace and His truth, or the Sefer Ha-Chayim, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. You know, chapter 13 is talking about that other mark. That's not the mark that we got. We got the mark of the true cross, right? The true cross. We found the true cross of the Moshiach. Thus, I and I do not so-called believe Right? And we do not believe that I and I are made acceptable to Jah. 
right? By our own works, right? By our own means of so-called works of righteousness, as Nabiu Yishayu, Isaiah says within his book, Tito or Titus chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 goes into that. So please read Titus chapter 3 verse 5 to 6, but that does not excuse us from being without such works. So because we know that we're not made acceptable because we do good, do good, that's not what makes I and I acceptable. Right? But that does not excuse us from doing good, doing good. Overstand, understand, understand that. So we're not excused from such works because we know that that's the fruit of the Isla Irit. That's the fruit of the Menfes Kedus. That's the fruit of the Ruach HaKodesh in I and I lives. That's why we believe in the King of Kings through his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. That is the gospel. That's the good news. Now, the scriptures, the Metzhaf, it clearly warn that on the day of judgment to come, anyone's name not found written in the Sefer HaChayim, in the book of life, will be thrown into the lake of fire. Fire. That's the fire that burned. Revelation 20, verse 15. Moreover, professing so-called Christians, right? Those who profess to be Christians, those who say they come in Jesus' name, right? The professing Christians, they will stand before the throne of judgment to do what? To account for their lives. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, by fire, it's hot, hot. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Of what sort it really is. Not what it appears to be, but of what sort it is. First Corinthians 3, 13. Life, therefore, can be said to be an examination. Life, it can be said to be, is a test. And every moment, every single moment is irrepeatable. Now go come again. Right. Every careless word, therefore, that I and I utter will be echoed on the day of judgment. Mateus Wengel, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 to 37. Therefore, I and I future judgment day or day of judgment is decided zare is decided this day as we stand, right? As we come to an understanding, as we meditate and get an inner standing, and as we come to an overstanding and stand, and stand. The lamb, let's overstand the lamb, right? See, we don't have a lamb pictured right here because See, the lamb must be within. <laughs> the overs, it's not the outer lamb. It's the inner lamb. It's the lamb of Ha Elohim. And we're going to refer to the metaphysical Bible dictionary right here. Holy Spirit pointed I and I to it. And it fulfills with Revelation, a reading from Revelation 2.2. 2, 2. That's interesting because that's the Vezot Ha Baraka, right? That's the barakavat, baraket yichnat. And this is the blessing, which is the 54th Torah portion reading and feeding. Let there be light. And that is to come forward on the 11th, right? On the 11th. So this uh, Shabbat coming forward, right, is Yom Kippur for the October 3rd and October 4th. 
I will. This is why we're recording these vids and y'all will and will seek to put them up there ASAP. And um, those who are co-laborers, fellow brothers and sisters, uh, you know, seek to share it, repost it, retweet it, put it on your Facebook. Right. Don't worry about what men and people will say, because some people will try to discourage you. Right. Because I guess they already know their judgment. But remember what Luke chapter 12 says. And I say to you, verse eight, whosoever shall confess, I, Yeshua HaMoshi is speaking in I and I and I before men. So whosoever shall confess Yeshua, Yesus, I and I, black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ before men, him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of Ha. Elohim Baruchu. But he that denieth I before men shall be denied before the angels of Elohim. So take care, my brothers and sisters, to testify and to be a witness. And don't let men and people and they, the mysterious they, are they the same they at the Tower of Babylon, the nameless ones? Don't let they, you know, what people will say, cause you to go astray. Luke 12, verse 8. Whosoever shall confess I before men. So be sure to be a witness before men and people. All right? Call it what it may. I will. So the Lamb of Ha Elohim, metaphysically speaking, the Lamb of Elohim is the pure life and substance of being, right? Of being, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, by his overcoming, restored to humanity, the consciousness, the libona, the hearticleness of this Yehich. Yehich Barakat, this pure life and this, this, this pure substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the what? The evidence of things not seen. We walk by what? Faith and not by sight. You sight? Hence, he is called Seha Elohim. Hence, he is called Yeegaziavi Herbeg. Hence, he is called the Lamb of God. John chapter 1, verse 29 and verse 36. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. Now, in the Metzhaf, in the scripture, the scripture of truth, the Bible, the divine life is termed the Lamb of God. It carries the symbology of, the parabolical logic of its purity, its innocence, and guilelessness. Look it up, look it up. Its nature is to vivify, that means to make alive, viva, right? Viva tefari, with perpetual life, all things that it touches. It knows only to give, to give unceasingly, and externally without restraint, eternally, you could, uh, eternally. It knows only to give, to give unceasingly and eternally without restraint. It does not include wisdom, right? It doesn't include wisdom, which is another quality of being that man comprehends with a different part of his consciousness. Hmm. Bring to light what Hawari Apollo said about it's not to preach this gospel with like words of wisdom or intellectualism or, you know, let them call it foolish. <laughs> we rejoice. The pure life of Ha Elohim, Baruchu, blessed be he, it flows into man's consciousness through the spiritual body and is sensed that means it's perceived and thus received by the phi cycle or the physical if you please at a point in the loins 
This is the river of the water of life. Yehuet Wucha. This is what's mentioned in Revelation 2.2. 2. That water of life, that river of the water of life, bright as crystal, proceeding from the throne, proceeding from the throne of Ha Elohim, of God and the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Let's just go to let's just go to Revelation. Alright? As Burhana Salasi said, Revelation reveals the truth. And uh let's just read a couple of verses. This is part of the Brit Hadasha reading for the fifty fourth Torah portion coming up on the eleventh. Right, the eleventh. Remember, the third and fourth is Yom Kippur, and it's a high Ayla day, right? A high holy day. It's a Metasebia. It's a memorial. It's a remembrance. It's something that we need to think about. So, right here we have Revelation chapter two, two, the new paradise, and its river of the water of life. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit, every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads, in their frontal lobes, in their minds. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God Adoni Yahweh giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said to I, These sayings are faithful and true. And Adoni Yah of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew to his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Amen. The last message of the Bible. I don't know how much time we have right here. Let's just touch on it. It's just, it's just so sweet. Right? Of course, it's sweet to the mouth. Could be bitter to the belly. But through his grace and his truth, we'll get over it. Verse 8. And I, Johannes, John, the grace of Jah, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Then saith he to me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship Elohim, worship God. And he saith to me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, 
for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is caduce holy, let him be caduce still. Now it's interesting because there's a footer, right? We don't have time to get into the footer right here, but it goes into the definitions, the Old Testament definitions of righteousness and the New Testament definition of righteousness, as well as righteous living and self-righteousness. So, I would recommend ones uh, check that out for themselves, brothers and sisters. Awo. Awo. Isaiah again. Let's go to Isaiah. 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 We have like maybe about a minute left. Right? But let's go into Isaiah. Isaiah 55, which is an important metasebia, right? important thought. Uh, um, memorial of the mind to keep our mind stayed on heat and here's what it says right here oh this is a beautiful chapter so beautiful all right so let's go to uh, uh verse 6 55 and 6 it's speaking of the eternal salvation right it says seek ye yahweh he who be who he be while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Make the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Make him return, repent, return to Yahweh, to Jah's way. And he will have mercy upon him and to our Elohim, our power, our source, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Something to think about, brothers and sisters, in these last um, couple of days before atonement, right? The Yom Kippur, and something to stand and to overstand by understanding and understanding. Amen. Amen. So shalom once again, brothers and sisters. A word on the Lamb, the Lamb of Ha Elohim, the whole reason for the season, for this high Isla season. So shalom, Ras Tafari, and a Melkam Yom Kippur. Right? Atov, Maod. Shalom.